What's good? Back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over my stock frame transition effect. For those of you who transition from After Effects and Premiere Pro, you might be real familiar with Brown Delvada's stem frame transition effect. I got a lot of requests from YouTube, Instagram, and just emails in general asking me if I can recreate this effect for DaVinci Resolve. The stock frame transition is my take on it. This video, I'm going to go over the demo, which you can download right now for free at the link in the description of my website. Pre-orders also be going live. I'm hoping to get this out within the next two weeks. If something goes wrong with scheduling, whatever, I'll be sure to email you guys to let you know. Otherwise, two weeks from today is the schedule lunch time. Before I break down the demo, because this is a little bit different from my usual effects. It's not a preset. This is actually a template. I just want to say I appreciate everybody who's like, comment, and subscribed to the videos. We almost at 10K. It's right around the corner. So keep on pushing. Be sure to like this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload new content. Now I'm going to show you how this template works. All right. So like I said, this is a template, so it's not a drag and drop preset. I tried to make a preset, but it was too complicated. So to use this, if you already have DaVinci open, go and click this little house icon at the bottom. You're gonna bring up your project library. From here, you're gonna right click and you're gonna select restore project archive. If you use motion array or Volta elements templates before, it's similar to that. So click on that. Then you're gonna navigate to wherever you download the demo. Make sure you extract the files first and then you should see stock frame transition demo, DRA file. So click on it and hit open. Give it a second. It's going to create a new project file for you. I'm going to double click. Now the project is open. You'll see you have the effects itself along with the sound effects already pre-built. All you got to do is replace these placeholders. So how do you do that? I'm going to go over here and I'm going to deactivate the effects. And you should see these folder structure here. So if you have get your master folder, then you'll see stock frame, transition, edit, final, you know, frame effect, which is, which is in the final folder. And then you have other. In the other folder, you basically just have the placeholder image that I created. You have the frame itself. Then you have the sound effects. Then you also have a fusion folder. These are where these fusion clips are. Do not touch it. You see here it says fusion, do not touch. I'm going to expand it. Do not touch. If you mess with these, you'll pretty much mess up the whole effect and you can't really won't be able to fix it, but you can just re you can reactivate the archive just like I showed you previously from the project library, and it'll fix everything for you if you mess it up. If you restore this project and everything is not in it, or you have a media offline, just go to the link here. And you want to basically find the media files, you'll hit locate, go to the demo file, and you'll click on media files and select it. And it should relink everything for you if you have a problem with it. So now you need to replace the placeholder images that's in here. So we're going to go over here to the edit folder, click on stock frame. I'm going to minimize this a little bit. And basically, what you're going to do, these are different timelines. So you basically just click on one, it's going to automatically open up your timeline. And then you're just going to drag drag and drop an image. So I'm going to actually hit control I get some stock footage. So these are the images I got from a previous project I finished. And basically what you want to do is once you have the, once you have the placeholder shot open, which you can tell which one it is right here, E1 shot, so basically effect one shot one. You basically just want to place an image. Oop. Place it down here. And everything else is done for you. You can crop this down if you want to, you don't have to. If you have an image that's, Go over here to the video tab and zoom out just a little bit. Let's say, for instance, you have an image that doesn't fill the full screen. You can either just zoom in on the image or click the placeholder image and hit D on the keyboard to disable. So I'm going to go back over here and double click. Actually, I'm going to click on my image first and then double click on zoom. This image does fill the full screen, so don't really have to worry about it. But if you have one of those images that's like extra wide and had the black bars at the top and bottom, and it's showing this image in the showing this image in the background. You just hit D, D to disable. So now go back now to edit folder, stock frame, shot two. Go over to the master folder and just bring in the next shot. And you can bring in video footage as well. I'm just using uh, still frames. Then go back to edit, stock frame, and shot three. Back to master and bring in the third shot. And so you can tr trim this down if you want to, but you don't need to necessarily because it's pretty much going to stick to this length, which is the placeholder length. And then once you have everything placed within the different timelines, you can go to final, go to the final folder, and then just click on it. And it's going to bring up the effect. And now you see all the images are there. There's nothing you need to reshape, remove, or anything like that. If you want to change these images, you can click on one and just use the... Expected tab transform tools. 
that's kind of choppy right there because it's still rendering. Then, of course, you can use position to move stuff around if you want to. And I couldn't set it up on the edit page to be able to move this around, move the footage around. So what I did was say, for instance, if you need to resize the footage or reframe it, you can click on which clip you want. Right click and then go to open in fusion. And I know a lot of y'all like to avoid fusion at all costs, but all you have to do is simple. Just move this over here. I even place the note here. Just use this transform node to reposition your media. So click on that. You can resize it and make it bigger, make it smaller. Move the center axis and all that stuff. And then once you have what you once you have the settings the way you want, you can just go back to the edit page. Now, of course, this being a template, it opens itself within its own project file. So now you've got the question of probably how do I get this to my actual project that I'm working on? You're going to use dynamic linking for that. But real quick before I get into that, friend to the channel, Motion VFX is launching a new contest. This is the Showtime Challenge. The challenge starts April 8th and is going to be going for four weeks. The deadline for your submission will be May 7th. The challenge is simple. This is your chance to flaunt your creativity and your editing skills to create the ultimate show reel. There's going to be over 22K in prize. Your video only needs to be 60 seconds long and make sure you tag Motion VFX at whether you upload it on Instagram, YouTube Shorts, YouTube, TikTok, whatever. Make sure you tag them with your post. I leave your information in the description down below. They're also going to be releasing a free preset pack that you can download and use in the channel. So go down here to the little house, click on that, right click. If you don't have it on already, which if you don't, you'll see it, it doesn't have a little check mark, but you're going to use dynamic project switching. So it's going to activate that. And then I don't have a project, so I'm just going to go here, this little untitled project. So I'm going to click on that. Within this project, I have these two clips and I want to use the stock frame transition. So I'm going to go up here and hit this little drop down arrow and go back to the demo. Here I have the timeline and everything. I'm going to go to final frame effect one and select it, select it. I'm going to hit control or command C if you're on, if you're on Mac. And then I'm going to go back to a drop down arrow, switch back to my previous project. Go over here to master. I'm actually going to create a new bin just to keep everything separated. You don't necessarily have to. I'm going to hit demo, hit enter. I'm going to go inside that bin, hit control or command V. It's going to paste the timeline. So the final effect is effect 001. And basically, I want to place that in between these two clips. So just grab it, drop down. You're going to have the sound, sound effects and everything already pre built in. I'm actually move it up a little bit. So now the clip plays, which I need to stand this clip out on. So you play it back, you get the quick transition, go to your next clip, and you can still make alterations from here. So if you want to change the position or anything like that, just click on this, right click, and then open in timeline. And basically you have the same options that you previously had. So you go in here now, you can zoom in, zoom out on this, to make it bigger or smaller. You can hit D to disable if you just want to. You can go down here and move the position and select this one now and move the position over. If you want two side by side, you can do that. And then for say for instance, you want to zoom in on this one. You can do this, you don't have to play all three and then you just disable the third sound effect. You can go up here to hit this little drop down arrow and go back to the original timeline or click on here and bring up the timeline viewer and it'll bring up the little tabs. And you can go back to timeline one, which is where my effect is originally at. And then it just changed from there. You still want to change the images within the stock frame. You can go to say, for instance, shot one and say, for instance, you want, I'm just going to bring in this footage here. And this was our meaning earlier. If you have footage that kind of crops up at the top and bottom, you can either just zoom in to fill in the gap. Actually, I'll go back, click on the footage, then zoom in to fill in that space. Or if I hit control Z to go back, select the clip and then hit D to disable. Now I'm not going to turn this into a still image. I'm going to leave it as a video. Then I'm going to go back to timeline one. And of course, now you can see the image being replaced and it's a video instead of a still frame. Now throughout the course of you using this effect, we go back, can't really see it, but there's a slight kind of like misshape or warping that takes place when you're editing. I don't know if you actually saw it, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like this weird black line comes up. That basically comes up because it's not rendered. So if I go up here now to playback, go to render cache and change it to user. You'll see a red bar come up. If not, right click 
and then go to fusion output make sure it's turned on right click again and go to render cache color output this is already rendered now so now you shouldn't see that little yeah so now you don't see it anymore so if you don't have your render cache on and you want to get a real-time preview you might see some distortion and things like that from the effect just render it out or if you don't want to use the render cache when you render out the final project you should see it all corrected one more time i'll right click and go into opening timeline for those brave souls who want to journey into fusion you can right click open in fusion and then you see the whole breakdown how everything was set up it's really a relatively easy setup it goes from right to left this knoll is just a blank background and then got the media is merged to that I've got the transform i made an instance which is like a copy of the transform what i put up here that you can use to manipulate the media my creator background is a placeholder for the media and i got the rectangle is basically creating the mask around the media to hold it within the frame which is this here which is merged to the rest of everything else this transform node controls the overall effect so it's basically affecting everything this transform is affecting everything to the left of it and this is the drop shadow which you see here on the side if you want to change the strength of it the angle everything like that you can do that from the fusion page if you just want to cut it off altogether, just hit this little icon here and it disable it and then then just the brightness base just a little keyframe it shows at the beginning it flashes in and then these are the keyframe well this node here is a transform node i use it to create the keyframe for the animation to zoom in and to zoom out now this demo is set for one frame the rest of them are actually a little bit shorter than i've done so far they only last for a couple of frames so if you want to change the length of this you can shorten it just by grabbing the end over here and bringing it down it's dynamic so it'll automatically it will scale to that if you want to be a couple of frames you'll see it'll still animate in and animate out so say for instance, i wanted to make it this short hit d to re-enable So now if I go back to my timeline one, so now back in my timeline is going to reflect the changes I made. So, so you know it's coming in real quick, animate off. So now I can go over here where my playhead is, select the clip and then just split the clip and delete the back end if I want to. And I still got the full effect. Once again, this demo is free. You can download from the link in the description down below. Pre-orders are live right now. All information will be on my website, gsmixmedia.store. And you can click here to learn how to create the paper fold effect with the DaVinci Resolve. And I'll see you in the next video.